morning, everybody. Good to see you. Thanks for participating in your county government. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. At this time, I call the Pauling County Board of Commissioners work session for April the 26th to order. And right if you bring the list forward, please, sir, uh, be a good time to silence your phones if you still got them on. And I don't see any elected officials. Do you, Jason? Thank you. No, I don't. <coughs> okay. So, um, my well, good. We have a Dallas City Councilman yeah, we sure do. That's Jimmy earlier. Hey, look at him as the head down back there. Dallas City Councilman Jimmy Henson, who's here. Always glad to have you here, Jimmy. Um, we're supposed to have a pastor of a uh, kids uh, pastor at Western Church here, but I don't see Brent. So uh, I'm gonna. I've got this person on my right who's always ready and uh, ready for an invocation, and always uh, touches my heart what he says. So we'll let him lead us in invocation and lead us in the pledge. Surprise. Dear Lord, we just ask you to be in this room right now. Uh, be, with, uh, be with this board as they consider, uh, consider some weighty things in county government. Father, I just ask that you give them guidance. Help them to know what to do and what not to do. Lord, I pray for those that are here to be honored today. Uh, Father, it's always... Um, in Romans 13, you say that we need to respect those that are in the civil authorities because the government's here for a purpose. And Lord, we, uh, the folks here in this room try to accomplish that purpose, and we just ask that you would guide us all as we do that. Uh, we know that we're here because that's in accordance with your will. Father, please protect us and guidance as we do your work for the people here. Lord, I lift these things up to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Turn my mic back on. The minutes from the April 12th work session are available for your review. Uh, our announcement this morning include uh, Team Paulding uh, uh, events, and let's and just listen up. For which it stands. So uh, we will continue here with the, uh, the kickoff, a lot of spring events that are going on around the county. <clears throat> Touch a Truck event. This is our 19th year. I figure we've got 12 to 1,500 out here right now, and we've still got probably an hour or so to go. The whole idea is to get people to come into the parks, to have an event that's free, and uh, enjoy the community. It's a community event with all the different uh, vendors here, so community collaboration. Good job, Jeff Harkins and your team. I, I love that. There's so much going on, and uh, the parking lot was full Saturday with the touch of truck. Uh, nobody wanted to touch my F-150, though. I don't know what the deal is. 
Uh, and of course that event down in downtown Dallas was spectacular. Um, we would like to present the Public Safety Appreciation Award to Deputy uh, Vanessa Newsom with the Marshall Bureau. And I'm gonna ask Lieutenant Smith to come to the podium and uh, Vanessa, if you'll come up front also. And she, uh, she has her husband here with her and her daughter. So we're she so hasn't glad seen to him yet. <laughs> right there. How long y'all been married? <laughs> you didn't even know they were here? Oh. Your, your daughter got out of school for this. You know? uh, yeah. Well, before Brian says anything, the uh, award here says presented to Vanessa Newsom in recognition of outstanding service to her community, presented by the Pauline County Board of Commissioners this 26th day of April, 2022. <laughs> So, we're so glad to have you with us. Uh, I'm here. Turn around and face the music. <laughs> Y'all come on up. Here. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Um, today, I get the pleasure of recognizing Deputy Vanessa Newsom for the Public Safety Appreciation Award. Deputy Newsom was sworn in as the Deputy Marshal on April 6, 2021, after serving a combined 19 years with Cobb Sheriff's Office, Cobb Police, and Chattahoochee Tech Police. Since coming to the Marshall Bureau, Deputy Newsom has set herself apart and performed her duties far beyond the expectations of her supervisors. She comes to work each day with a smile on her face, ready to face the day. I cannot say enough about her drive and work ethic. I remember in the interview, she stated her goal was to give back to the community, and she does this each and every day she comes to work. Deputy Newsom completed FTO training in February of this year and was certified in health and wellness in March. She continues to show her desire for more training and education and has been accepted into the three-week instructor training in August. Deputy Newsom is an absolute joy to work with, and this is shown by her exceptional relationship she has with her coworkers. We truly do not know what we would do without her. She's an asset to the Marshall Bureau and the citizens of Paulton County. We found a little bit of gold in the hired her. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Fun. So, we got false advertisement on my agenda. I guess it's false advertisement on yours. Colonel Hunton is not here, but he has sent. Uh, uh, part, of the, uh, part of his team, uh, Major John Sterling and Sergeant Jared uh, Gutlet and Gutter, I'm sorry, and, and Detective Tyler Brown. And apparently uh, they've got something they're going to show us. Um, did y'all bring? Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Well, we've got a robot in the room, so let's hear what they have to say about it. Well, first and foremost, I want to thank the, the board. For everything you guys have done this new robot is a game changer for our keeping our guys safe and uh helping us to mitigate situations where we have hostage situations i'd like to thank the citizens of paulton county we've had a robot for years but it kind of got out of date and it would get stuck and we had a bunch of issues with it you guys came forth and you helped us out to get a better uh newer robot that we can get parts for us out of north carolina it's a really changes our capabilities to help make our team safe. So we're gonna do a real quick demo. To my right here, I have Tyler Brown. I also have Sergeant Gunner here, and they're our primary operators of the robot. If you guys will look at the screens around you, you can see everything we can see. We haven't had that capability in a long time, so we also have repeaters so we can be further away from a situation and actually send the robot in to, uh, to scout out the what's going on in a house or something of that nature. Okay. 
a lot of times you guys, you don't get to see what we do on the other end. That's why we wanted to come out here today to show you guys what your investment has done for the citizens of Paulding County. Does the robot have a name? Have we named it yet? Kind of working on it still. Yes, sir. We're trying. We're trying to figure it out. I can't stand real quick. One thing. So this robot, basically, it can climb stairs. We've tested it. These two guys have tested it extensively. We have trained with it out at the range. Believe it or not, the, the robot can go through doors. It's got a 360 camera. So as you can see, we can we can see everything that's going on in the room. It's got a claw that can open doors. What if it were hit with a round? Uh, the way they design them nowadays, sir, it, it would, uh, we've had a, it's not bulletproof, but it would keep going. But it would, it, it keeps us from, we have to make entry into a house. We have a, a hostage situation or a barricaded suspect. A lot of times it's a barricaded suspect. We're not going to go send our guys in because we don't want anybody to get hurt. We set a perimeter up. We can send this guy in and try to negotiate with the suspect. So that's, that's really helped us out a lot on our capabilities. Doesn't eat very much? <laughs> no, sir, just a little power and it's good to go. <laughs> I've been doing SWAT uh, two years longer than I was here. I was a firefighter first. Uh, I've been with the sheriff's office for, uh, I've been with the county since 97 and these capabilities, these robots, and all these new toys and stuff we get has really changed how we do business, which is, you know, to save lives. That's what we're about. Anybody have any questions? This is fascinating to me. Anybody in the audience have a question? Will they do yard work? Yeah, every now and then, sir. <laughs> cool. But again, thank you for your time. I know you guys are busy uh, keeping the county running and keeping it safe, so uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Well, we're glad that you got this so you can stay safe as well. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. Major Sherling and Sergeant uh, Gunner and uh, Detective Brown, thank you for being here. We appreciate you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Under bid awards, item number two is to award the State Route 120 connector at State Route 120 Connection Project to the low bidder Bartow Paving Company incorporating the amount of $399,527.88. Mr. George Jones to let us know a little bit more about that. Morning. Morning. Um, finance advertised the SR120 Buchanan Highway, SR120 connector, otherwise known as Scoggins Road Project. The work essentially consisted of putting in a left turn lane on Buchanan Highway, turning onto Scoggins Road, and a right turn lane on Buchanan Highway, turning into Scoggins Road. Um, GDOT originally was a pro, we approached GDOT about programming this project, and they originally worked towards that. However, they were going to include this on their quick response program. Their quick response program had a maximum cap of $200,000. The original estimates for this work came in over $200,000, so they approached the county at that point in time asking if the county would take on the responsibility of designing and uh, constructing, managing the construction of this project, and they would provide $200,000 towards the project itself, and we agreed to do that. Um, the bids for this project were opened on April 1st. We received two bids, and we recommend award to the lowest responsive bidder, Bartow Paving, in the amount of $399,527.88. That bid is within 5% of our engineer's estimate based on current rate market rates for construction. Funding from this project will be from the GDOT funding, $200,000. The remainder will become from SPLOST. Um, the good thing about these type of projects, obviously Buckhannon Highway is a state highway, higher speed. When you are able to separate slower moving traffic that's trying to turn left or right, you help reduce the crash rate. Um, typically these type of projects have been shown to reduce left turn crashes by 28 to 48 percent and right turn crashes by anywhere from 14 to 28 percent.
Any questions? Well, it's going to be a good project, and we look forward to it. Thanks for the report, George. Thank you. Also under bid awards, item number three is discuss action to award the uh, wastewater master plan update contract for engineering services to Brown and Caldwell uh, in the amount not to exceed $589,945 from the uh, renewal and extension fund. And um, I guess Ms. Ashmore is going to report. Yes. Um, Thank you. Um, the a wastewater master plan will, this study, this uh, update will develop a plan for the sanitary sewer system that's necessary to sustain and support growth. Uh, it will make recommendations on improvements for all portions of the, of the sanitary sewer system, including the lines, the pump stations, and the treatment plants. Um, and our last update, our last master plan was done of the collection system standalone in 2006. It, then with the economic downturn, it kind of reset the timetable for everything, um, everything in the system. Um, we advertised for, um, for proposals in December, late December of last year, and we received two proposals. Um, we had representatives of economic development, DOT, finance, and the water system evaluate uh, those proposals and uh, we unanimously um, selected Brown and Caldwell as the top ranked proposer. Um, we have uh, worked with them. There, there were, we did have some discussions with both of our um, proposers during the selection process to answer questions about their proposals. Um, uh, I'm pleased to report Kelly Comstock is in the back of the room with Brown and Caldwell. Kelly is the um, proposed as the principal in charge, um, with Craig Ferguson being the project manager for uh, for this analysis. It is a team that also involves the Freeze and Nichols um, company in order in in supporting on the collection system analysis. Uh, the, um, we're recommending today award of this, uh, the contract for engineering services to Brown and Caldwell for this analysis. Any questions? So good to have Kelly Comstock with us this morning and they've certainly got a reputation that uh, is stellar in Paulding County and so glad to have you back, Kelly. All right, we'll move on to reports from uh, committees and departments and got some good news from Finance Director Tabitha Pollard this week and we certainly wanted her to share with us this morning. So. This is exciting. Um, it's one of these things that makes me move every day. To, it's, it's, um, it shows Paulding County's moving in the right direction. So a couple about a month or so ago, we were contacted by Standard & Poor's. They had taken a look at our financials and they wanted to do um, a review. And it was time, it's been a couple of years, and unless we go to market um, to issue bonds, then they don't do a review except for periodically they'll come back and request to, to review. So they did. Um, the chairman and I sat through question and answer session with them. They went through the financials, they went through the budget documents, they went through um, quite a few other pieces of material that we sent to them. And um, it took about a month. So normally it takes about a week to 10 days. I guess it's kind of like everything else. It's taking a little longer, uh, staff changes, whatnot. They came back um, Friday and uh, they had upgraded us from a AA to a AA plus. And so they sent us a report on Monday to give the um, reasoning from that and to kind of explain that report was made public Monday afternoon. We posted it to all the bondholders this morning. And um, some of the things that they mention in there are um, as a result of the upgrade was very strong budgetary performance and maintenance of improved reserves, prudent assumptions, 
uh, in our revenues and the fact that we no longer carry the load, carry any piece of the load for the hospital. So if you'll remember in January when they refinance, they take, they've, the piece has been removed where you're backing the bonds and so that's a substantial improvement um, as far as the ratings are concerned. Increase in sales tax. Over the past four years, our sales tax have increased by 53.2%. Those are, com that's a combination of people shopping in Paulding, maybe pandemic keeping people in Paulding, um, Costco, it, there's a number of factors that impact that. And our other taxes, which are not property taxes, but your franchise fees, your, um, or your um, intangibles, anything else that is uh, that is a, considered a, a separate tax has increased by 48 percent. Again, that's not property tax and the increase in sales tax is, is pretty substantial. Other pieces, growing economy supported by the county's 18.6 assessed value growth between 2018 and 2020 driven by growth in commercial and residential values. Um, very strong financial profile with reserves above the policy requirements and surplus operations in fiscal year 2021. Moderating debt profile with the re refunding of series 2012 hospital authority bonds and limited future debt needs and good financial management and pro policies and practices, very strong institutional framework. That's a combination. So that is um, some of finance, but it is primarily you all, it's your department heads, it's your employees, and most of all, we wanna let the citizens know this rating actually belongs to them, it doesn't belong to any of us, it's their money. Um, the upside scenario for a stable outlook is while unlikely in the near term, material improvement in incomes coupled with growth and diversification in the economic base such as, sorry, diversification in the economic base such that the economic profile is comparable with that of a AAA peers, we could raise the rating over the long term. So it's not anything that's gonna happen um, immediately. There are some things that, that they wanna see in Paulding, um, but it does give the potential that we, we are looking favorable for that type of upgrade in the future. Downside scenario, we could lower the rating if reserves are no longer maintained above 75% of operating expenditures, leading to a deterioration financial performance consistent with that of AAA, plus, I mean of AA plus peers. So as long as we keep doing what we're doing, we'll maintain and um, over the long term, we could be looking at another upgrade which would get us to a AAA and there are only a few in the state of Georgia that have achieved that at this point. So, congratulations to Paulding. <laughs> well, Tabitha, I mean, I'm so excited, so proud. Uh, it, it is very exciting as you started out saying. Uh, one of my favorite sayings of all time is just enjoy your achievements as well as your plans. And we want to enjoy this achievement, uh, soak it up, take the, take the rest of the month off. I'm just I can't do that. <laughs> go to Florida uh, uh, and you mentioned what they wanted to see what what they want to see and why we have gotten this in my view is the same as w the things we want to see we want to see commercial growth so that there are better job opportunities for our kids and grandkids right here and they don't have to go out of county uh, and you know the revenue can come more from the commercial side, as we all know, than from the residential side, from the property owners. We'll be able to balance that better. So uh, this is such a, a special day, and all the commissioners have weighed into me. Uh, and I think you were on a couple of the texts also uh, as to how much they appreciate it. So one little thing that we could do is uh, have you and your team come up. So we thought, uh, with the help of my trusty pro team here, <laughs> you'll be the first, and uh, well, that's the bigger one, right? Well, I hope my wife ain't watching. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you. let's see, next is like Sarah, right? You, you go ahead. I know most everybody's name, I'm still trying to learn all the names, is Kathy. 
in April. And Trisha, Trisha yeah. <laughs> and Joe. And <laughs> Wendy. Yeah. And Jamie. And their newest addition, Amy. And we're missing Michelle today, so we'll uh, we'll get that to Michelle. And I just I guess we are going to do a picture, but any of the post commissioners or county manager, county attorney want to weigh in, please do. Thank you, ladies. All right. Nobody wants to jump in right now. We'll go into public participation. I'll say they always pay our bills, so we're excited about that. Uh, and I will say that the bond rating really does matter when it comes to being able to do new good things in Paulding County, whether it be roads or some of these big projects we take on, this building, the jail, you know, all kinds of things. It matters in the long run when, the, when they see Standard & Poor's has rated us this way. Uh, not a lot of counties get that treatment. Well said. And I do think it's important I talked to Tabitha a little bit this morning. Just to reiterate, I think there was only five counties, Tabitha, is that right, in the state yes. that have a double A plus rating? No, that have, they, there was only five that have a triple A. I wasn't able to get the actual number of double A plus. Okay. So, and, and also, it's been since 2010, since Paulding Counties has been up, upgraded. So after you asked that question, I, asked, I looked back to see. We're rated by Standard & Poor's and by Moody's. In 2009, Standard & Poor's had Paulding County at a double A. Um, in 99, we were at an A plus. So it goes from A plus to double A minus to double A to double A plus. So we've seen um, three upgrades since 99 for this and in 2009 we were a double A and that's what we were up until this point. Um, Moody's in 2009 we were a double A three so that rating goes from a double A three to double A two to double A one to a triple A. Um, we are at in Moody's we're at a double A one so we are one notch from a triple A by both Moody's and S and P. Keith, didn't know what you said all your high school grades were, double A plus? Uh, <laughs> no one has signed up uh, on agenda items. I'll move to the consent agenda, which I'm required to read. Um, item number four is authorization to purchase five Chevrolet Tahoes for the sheriff's office in the total uh, not to exceed $250,000. Uh, with SPLOS money and JCSA funding that will be used for that. Item number five is to adopt resolution 22-15, authorizing the designation of signature authority for the submission of uh, local road activity forms and supporting documentation, reporting changes to the county's road system in compliance with the Georgia Department of Transportation reporting requirements in accordance with the official code of Georgia annotated 32-4-41. Item number six is to approve the conveyance of underground power easements to Georgia Power Company uh, on county property along Carter Road and US 278 on uh, post two. And item seven is authorize the chairman to sign the memorandum of understanding with the University of Georgia Board of Regents to provide support to the Paulding County Extension Office. And Item number eight is to approve action to extend the contract with Pimentus to provide credit card services through June 30th, 2026. 
And number nine is to declare the following uh, item listed on surplus and approve their disposal through auction or trade. I'm not gonna read the serial numbers. If you're interested in that, you can get a copy on, on the back uh, table back there. Uh, all of these are in the sheriff's office. Um, uh, there's an SUV, unit 000, 203, a 2003 Ford uh, Expedition. Uh, another sheriff's vehicle, unit S-75, which is a car, and it's a 2003 Ford CV. Also in the sheriff is uh, unit P-10, it's a car, 2008 Ford. CV, uh, another sheriff's vehicle is unit P-44, which is a car, 2009 Ford CV. And finally, uh, unit S-155 is a car, it's a 2007 Ford CV. Uh, number 10 is the acceptance of the attached list of streets for perpetual maintenance. Uh, there's an attached list here on my agenda and also uh, a, a list of all the uh, streets that will go over to the county for perpetual maintenance on the back table also. Would any of the commissioners like to move any of these consent agenda items to, uh, to new business for further discussion? Hearing none, they'll stay on the consent agenda and uh, we'll move on. We have no old business today. Under new business, item number 11 is discuss action to adopt ordinance 22-06, adopting amendments to chapter 14 of the code of ordinance regarding animal control. Uh, Mr. Uh, County Attorney, Mr. Phillips and Chief Hess to combine on reporting this to us. All right, commissioners, uh, this is, it's been a long time since we've done an overall, an overhaul to the animal control ordinance and this is what this is. Uh, in my experience, as you're in court dealing with particular legal issues regarding the animal control ordinance or any ordinance, you learn over time what works well and what needs to be changed. Uh, the folks out in the field, Eileen Culberson and her folks with animal control, they as well learn over time uh, when, you when you're on these calls what helps, what works, and what doesn't work. This is kind of an, uh, a little bit of an overhaul where we've gone through the entirety of the animal control ordinance and we're bringing updates to make it work a little bit better. Purposes here, I've just kind of highlighted uh, without going through them in too much details, too many details. It revises definitions and clarifies which animals, which types of animals that animal control actually has jurisdiction over. Uh, the things that particularly that animal control does not have jurisdiction over are going to be uh, livestock, wildlife, and wild and exotic animals, although they do have some limited jurisdiction there. Uh, this ordinance is going to update our dangerous slash vicious dog ordinance to bring it in compliance with state law, clarifies the role that animal control plays alongside the sheriff's office when dealing with livestock that are running at large which is an exclusive area for the sheriff's office, but with animal control's assistance. Um, it also, in Paulding, we have a, doc, a, a barking dog ordinance. Uh, we have learned over the years that, that this is a difficult ordinance to enforce. Uh, it is more of a private cause of action for citizens to bring against their neighbors who have barking dogs uh, because it affects people individually as opposed to the public as a whole. What we've done in this ordinance update is reclassify that to make it clear that barking dog complaints should be brought by the citizen uh, as a private nuisance action in Paulding County Magistrate Court. It does provide that animal control will assist in responding initially to the call to make sure that the animals involved are okay and there are not any other violations that may be occurring. It also provides that the marshal's office will be available to serve the summons in, an, in a private nuisance uh, barking dog complaint. Uh, we feel that making this move will better prioritize the resources of animal control and make it consistent with what Title 41 of the Georgia Code provides. Uh, finally, we've got a thing called the Animal Control Hearing Board. This ordinance makes a change there in that we have 
uh, several members of the board who are there to make a determination once they hear a case where a dog has bitten uh, a person, whether or not that dog should be classified with certain additional restraints and controls on those animals. Or should they be a, a dan classified as a dangerous dog? This ordinance revision basically says that the county attorney will be the hearing officer. So that means that I would be responsible for handling all the procedures of the hearing board and let the individual members of the board just focus on the merits of the case rather than having to worry about how to run the meeting in addition to handling the merits of each case. So with that said, there's a lot more detail in the, uh, in the nuts and bolts of the ordinance, but that's a general overview. Thank you very much. And you get the next one, item number 12, is discuss action to adopt ordinance 22-07, authorizing the executive assistant to the Board of Commissioners to accept service of process and authorizing the county attorney to statutorily uh, waive service to, of process on behalf of Pauley County. All right, on this one, when you get sued, everybody, you know, you, you get served. You've been served. I think there was a movie or something about that. Uh, you have been served. When you file a lawsuit, and governments get sued all the time, uh, we get Paulding County gets sued all the time. Cities get sued all the time. It is the nature of this business because what governments do are things that are, they make decisions with, with powers that they've been granted by the General Assembly <coughs> to do things that uh, are debatable sometimes, to do things that nobody else will do, to exercise uh, uh, force in ways that the general public's not authorized to do. Uh, to go to fires, to, to, to close down businesses, and things of those nature. Uh, but when you do that, you oftentimes get sued. And I've, I've said to my clients, if you never get sued as a government official, you're probably not doing your job because you've been elected to make tough decisions, not the easy ones. What this ordinance does is it says when Paulding County gets sued or when the Board of Commissioners gets sued, once the lawsuit is filed, it is the obligation of the plaintiff at that point to go out and personally serve the chairman to bring this body under the jurisdiction of the court. What that means is that a process server or a law enforcement officer has to take the complaint, to take the lawsuit, and find the chairman and give it to the chairman personally. There's not electronic service of lawsuits, all right? got to find the chairman, serve that chairman personally, which means give them the papers directly. Oftentimes, the chairman is out doing various things, out on business, maybe away from this building. Uh, so what this ordinance does, it allows the county clerk and the county clerk alone to accept service on behalf of Paulding County, on behalf of the chairman. And if the board of commissioners, the four of y'all, the five of y'all, when we have a vacancy, when y'all get sued in your official capacities. So rather than that process server having to go out and find Dave Carmichael, uh, the county clerk, Rebecca Meredith, can accept service on behalf of the county. This ordinance does not allow her to accept service on behalf of y'all if y'all get sued in your individual capacities. Uh, if, if that happens, they have to go find you individually. All right, we're not, we're not gonna make that any easier on them. This is just a way for us to handle those situations when the chairman is out of the office or otherwise not available, uh, and it allows the county clerk to do that. The second component of the ordinance is that it allows me as the county attorney to waive service of process in certain scenarios. Typically, once the chairman is served, the county has 30 days to file an answer to the lawsuit. There is a statutory procedure where the, somebody can waive service, and if you waive service, you no longer have to do that hand delivery. The county attorney can accept service, and that will allow the county 60 days rather than 30 days to answer the lawsuit. So it makes it a little bit easier on the plaintiff, but it gives the county twice as much time to answer the lawsuit. So that's what this ordinance does. It just clarifies things that exist and makes it clear what you can and can't do. Because the first thing our insured attorneys will ask us 
when ACCG provides representation is when did you get served? Because that's how the clocks all start. Any questions? Excellent information, Jason. Thanks, sir. Uh, move on to uh, the last new business item, which is number 13, discuss action to award amendment number one to the flow service provider contract with ADS environmental service provider contract. Uh, didn't sound like it reads very well there. Uh, in the amount not to exceed $445,309 from the renewal and extension fund, Ms. Ashmore. Good morning again. Morning. Let me. The um, trying to. About a about a year ago, we entered it. The board authorized a, a contract with ADS to install. Um, monitoring uh, flow monitoring in our collection system we went at that point we went from having the ability to monitor fl monitor flows only at the treatment plants to having monitors out in the copper mine system to really begin to to really hone in on what are the sources of infiltration and inflow into our system and these, um, these, we have seven monitors in the system. I just wanted to take a moment and show you the kind of, of information that we, uh, that we receive from this and that we can, um, that, that, that it is assisting us in tackling this, this infiltration inflow. Um, so we start, we start with a map and a snap and and then move into a um a specific site and a quick snapshot of what the conditions are in the field um how how full is that pipe running um and the and daily summaries of the data but most importantly we then our engineering staff and and our operations staff are looking at the details provided by each of those monitors and what we what we can see then with the with this network is the uh, the continuous flow through a pipe on this one the um, on, on this on the graph on the left you see just a normal dry weather variation in the flow and then as you move to the right we start to see rain impacts in that in that pipe um, over a, a rain event that happened two days in a row um, we also then use this tool on the right the um, this sh this is showing that most of our data is within the uh, within the pipe uh, but we start seeing data where it shows it's backing up into the manhole um, at that point triggering that we are then looking for where is the source where's all that extra water coming from um, and we have um, we have been been tracking this now and I'd like to show you what we've what we've eliminated um, at this point and this is uh, the photo on the right is in the Riverwood subdivision and inflow coming into a manhole that we that we are uh, located and have eliminated at this point uh, the photo on the lower portion of the screen is a creek located just north of highway 278 uh, the monitors had indicated that there was a large inflow into the system and we moved them to a sewer line um, and to show a sewer line that was crossing a creek um, and saw that saw that inflow coming into the system anytime it was raining at which point we couldn't see the we could not see the line crossing the creek so visually from the from ground level we we could not see 
what was, go what was occurring. But through our monitoring, we then went back and tracked the source of inflow to this line that, that's crossing a creek just north of 278, and that has also been eliminated. Um, this is important, particularly as this is pumped flow. It is also then has to run through our treatment plant and it takes capacity that we otherwise need for continued development of, uh, of the county. This amendment is a recommendation to increase our monitoring network uh, for two purposes. Uh, one is to expand our monitoring network into the pumpkin vine and Sweetwater basins to provide data for continuing to look for and eliminate that, the sources of infiltration and inflow in the system. But it also provides the data necessary to calibrate um, a model of the system that will be developed under our master plan. Um, and we're bringing this to you separate from the master plan because we, um, if we were to incorporate it in the master plan contract, we would look at it for two months. In this case, we can then continue to monitor. After we've gotten the calibration data, we can continue to monitor the system, continue to, to search out and, and find, those, find those, uh, those sources. This provides continuous uh, insight into the system. We, um, and it supports our transition from reactive to preventive maintenance and preventive operation of, of and good operation of the system. So we're recommending um, an, a, an amendment to this contract to supply the additional monitors, do the ma monitoring maintenance. They also move the monitors when they're needed to investigate um, a source and it is for $445,309. Laura, are these monitors located in the main office uh, or out in the, at the plant? They are located all throughout the collection system so that when we're building the mathematical model of the collection system, we can calibrate flows as, as they go through and use that to project future needs. We, they come together um, and, and give, a, give us access to that data um, wherever we are. Uh, it's a way, it, through a website that we can access and that, that our field, field staff can access. In fact, Mike Kensley was using it yesterday. Um, when he was making a, making a modification in the system uh, to see the impact. The, uh, but primarily, it, our, our engineers on the second floor, we've got access to it throughout the building to, to be able to monitor what's going on in the system. So is these monitors is something we can't buy and do ourselves, or is it an option if we're going to continue in this kind of well, it, in, this, in this case, this is a support issue. Um, we, if w the, they're technologically more sophisticated and the installation and, um, of, the, of the monitors leads to it being pretty specialized. Uh, when we reach the point where we can just leave monitors in a single location, we'll have more options to be able to reduce that level of support. Yes, it does, sir. Yes. It, it, yes. This is this is a um, full service. At this point, we just have we just access the we're accessing the data, and we will own the monitors. So we've used ADS. Yes. A lot. They, they've been supporting us for over a year. Okay. Questions? Any other questions? Lori, yeah. how long do the monitors, what is their life? Oh. I don't remember. I'm sorry. 
but I'll get that answer for you today. Okay, thank you. Okay, thanks, Lori. And that is the conclusion of regular business. Uh, no one signed up on non-agenda items. Uh, we do uh, have, uh, well, I don't see it on here, but traditionally we've uh, called for any of the commissioners that would like to announce something or express gratitude about anything. So uh, the, the floor is open. Um, Okay, well, let's uh, recognize here that we need to go into executive session uh, for pending litigation. Um, so <clears throat> I would like to announce that we won't come back into this room uh, after executive session uh, for real estate, that uh, we will adjourn in, in that session. So would anybody like to... Make a motion that we go into executive session for pending lit litigation and real estate also, right? Just litigation. Just litigation. Okay. All right. I make a motion to go into executive session for litigation. We have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Dunn. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, any opposed? We stand adjourned to executive session.